Hi friends, I'm here with a truth dagger from John chapter 10, verse 3, as well as Isaiah 43, verse 1. And what I really want to focus on is the fact that we hear the voice of the Lord and He calls us by name, that He knows your name, that there is no need to fear or to be anxious about the what ifs. What if in the end I don't hear him? What if I hear something else? What if I fall for the counterfeit? What if I hear the voice of the stranger and that's the one that I follow? What if those fears that a lot of us have deep down inside that we may not admit out loud that like, oh, what if I actually don't do the right thing by the Lord? What if I'm deceived? I know that I know that a lot of people have these feelings. People have reached out to me. People have asked questions about it. And so I want to give you a tool here to be able to hear the voice of the Lord and know that you're hearing the voice of the Lord, especially as the days grow darker. Now, I'm going to read from John chapter 10. I'm going to read verses 1 to 5 for you. And you, hopefully, you'll have heard this before. And this is kind of where, um, this is a scripture a lot of people will quote regarding their fear about uh, hearing or listening to and responding to the wrong voice. Truly, truly, I say to you, this is Jesus talking, okay? Truly, truly, I say to you, he does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way. That man is a thief and a robber, okay? But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, okay? This is, this is, this is the, the dagger here. To him, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name. Okay, that's a part we often forget. We often like overlook that. We're so concerned about hearing his voice, hearing his voice, hearing his voice. We miss the part where he actually calls us by name and he leads us out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers. Now, likewise, I'm going to read Isaiah 43, 1. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Ah, I love it so much. And so I want to unpack this for you a little bit because it's really gripped my heart. Listening to people, listening to people um, who are just walking in a bit of fear regarding this idea of, okay, the sheep hear my voice. What if I don't hear his voice? What, how do I know that it's his voice? What if I, how do I hear the voice of the Lord? And the biggest key right there is that he calls you by your name. And I'll say this, that the name Jesus, the name that Jesus has given you is not the name the accuser has given you. It's not the name that religion has given you. It's not the name that the lies that have been spoken over you. It's not the thing that, that you may be called yourself, you know, when you are down on yourself. It is, it is all Jesus redemption, restoration, reconciliation, resurrection, all of those R words. Jesus is going to call you by the best possible name. And anything that is not, that is not the voice of the shepherd. Now, when we look at the word name, okay, first of all, first of all, let me rewind a little bit. Nearly every single translation, I love to look at all the different translations, like on the on you version and Bible Hub. Like I just all of the translations, there's so many of them. I love it so much. Nearly every single translation says he calls you by name or he calls you by your name. And it's the special name that he has given you. You will know. You will know when you hear the voice of your Lord. Now, the name 
Calling someone by name is a very personal thing. I was watching the movie The King's Speech earlier with um, Colin Firth and Jeffrey Rush. I love this movie so much. It inspires me. It's just a beautiful, beautiful movie. And, um, you know, the, it, the, the king, he became king and he... Um, they called him a very personal name was Bertie, and and when when Colin Firth, who is the prince who becomes the king, meets with Jeffrey Rush for the first time, Jeffrey Rush is trying to help him with the stutter, and and Jeffrey keeps on calling him Bertie, and and he gets offended. Well, only my family calls me that because that's a special name. There are special names. My husband is Costin. I call him Costi. His sisters call him Costi. And there's like one other friend in the world that has been given permission to call him Costi. It's a special name. And that's what it is between you and the Lord. That comes through intimacy. That comes through relationship. That comes through the secret place. And I know I sound like a broken record, I know I do. I know a lot of people do. But you honestly, we need to be in the presence of God. We need to know Him intimately. We need to chase after Him. You know, the Strong's Concordance refers to this word that that refers to the word na- or the um the word name. Uh, he knows you by name. You know. It's um the Hebrews would think of of it as a it, it almost invokes an emotional response. Um, it it's a the Hebrew way of thinking of it. I have written here that a person's name it covers the thought, it covers the feeling that is aroused by remembering when you hear the name, and so. You know, my dad's name is James. And so every, I love my dad. And so every time I meet someone who has the name James, I immediately, my heart warms because that's my dad's name, you know? Um, and, and, and there's the opposite effect with other names out there. But I just love this concept. He calls us by name. And when he calls that name, it's actually arousing a feeling of intense love that he has for us. Every time he says our name, he calls us by name and we know that we can hear him. We know, we know the father's voice, the voice of the shepherd. We know that voice when he calls us by name. And in order for that to happen, in order for us to hear it, we have to be with him. The Thayer's Greek lexicon says that it's a thing that distinguishes you from other people. Okay, so the, a name distinguishes you. I'm Mandy Woodhouse. My friend, over you know, it. I have a friend called Emily Gann, and Emily may or may not ever watch this, but it just her name just popped into my head. Like I'm not Emily. I am Mandy Woodhouse. Mandy Woodhouse is one of the things that distinguishes me from Emily. It's something that distinguishes you from other people. It registers you as a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. That's your name. So when he calls your name and you hear it and you respond, it's like roll call, like, (laughs) ah, vines The vines describes it as a way of identifying you with Jesus. You know, scripture says that we've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer us that lives. It's Christ that lives inside of us. And so if Christ is alive and at work inside of us, when he calls our name, our spirit is going to attach to his. It leaps. We have the same spirit. We're one with him. And, and you know, I a name, it's like you know who the person is. Someone were to tell me, Costin Woodhouse, yes, I know who that is. I know him intimately. He's my husband. I know him. It's a, it's a two-way relationship. It's a, a form of familiarity. 
calling someone by name. It's being personally acquainted. And it's also symbolic of who he sees you to be. And so I want to encourage you that if you are one of those people that's just concerned about this whole like, oh, you know, um, uh, the sheep will follow him. They'll know him they could, because they know his voice. And, and you, you were nervous because you feel like you don't know his voice. And what if that's really my voice and not his voice? And what if, what if I don't really know his voice? And what if it's the enemy? Or what if it's this? Or what if I'm deceived? Or all of the, all of the, the stuff that goes on, the chaos in our minds that's actually not coming from within us. It's actually coming as an accusation externally from the powers of darkness that are trying to trip you up. Here is my wisdom for you. Get in his presence. Go to him. There is nothing like his love. He is madly, passionately in love with you. He gave his life for you and he is waiting to just sit with you and to to share his secrets with you and to be intimate with you and to be able to to, to call you by name. And, and if you don't like your name, maybe you're one of those people, you just don't like your name. Ask him to give you a new one and he will. And, and maybe not like a legal, you know, legal paperwork kind of thing, but, but the special name that is between you and him that you know it's something so intimate and so beautiful. Revelation talks about how he's, he's given us a special name and it's written on a white stone and he's going to give it to us. And that's our special name. Ask him. Ask him and he will give you a name. Just get into his presence. Stay with him. Abide in Him. Linger. Do whatever you can. Chase after Him. Just ask Him. Invite Him to come. Ask Him to join you where you are. And let Him love on you. He knows you by name. He calls us by name. And I just want to finish on this right here. The end of Isaiah 43. It's not the end, but I'll end on this. Sorry. Um, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. The flame shall not consume you. I hope that blesses you today. Use that truth dagger Get before him and ask him what he calls you. And I bet you'll be surprised, pleasantly surprised. All right. Bless you guys. See you later.